Oh, wait, wait, see you, Jason. There is a roof over my head in Watkins Glen, and I'm not entirely sure I know how to handle that. GT1. Woohoo! I am in the Corvette. I'd like to say it's because the Corvette is the the only car appropriate for Watkins Glen. It just uh, the, the American in me would not allow would not allow me to pick the Aston Martin here. But really, I tried both, and I just uh, prefer the Corvette by a lot on this specific course. We'll see if that changes week to week, but. It was not even close for me. I was faster and much more in control and just overall a happier human being in this Corvette. I'm starting almost dead last. There's, a, there's basically one guy behind me because I did not qualify. And there are only uh, three guys that did not qualify apparently. And I have no idea how much speed I have here because this seems, seems like a pretty high split. So probably not a lot. I think if I was in a bottom split, I have respectable speed here, nothing special, but uh, top split, probably not. Got one on your left. Stay right. That's right, I do all have to clear, blip this thing. Alright. Train wreck up through the S's here. If this is anything like GT3, this is going to be about survival. And this is probably going to be far worse than GT3. After all, it is a Class C race. Hey, drifting way wide here. Nobody's dead in this corner. This must be a high split, huh? People are alive. Everyone is still alive. That's incredible. Far exceeding what I came to know about GT3 the few times I drove it. Got one on your right. That's probably going to be the story Stay of the left. night there. This, uh... All clear, all clear. The Aston absolutely kills the Corvette on braking, from what I've seen. Americans didn't think brakes were very important. You got one on your right. Still there. Low car ahead. All clear, all, right, all clear. Here's the chaos. Go Whoa! Right. Woo -hoo! All right! Yep. Car on your right. Clear on the right. Just squeaked through there. That an awesome cloud of smoke. I just... Barely saw the guy, and thank goodness he stayed still. We've got a slow car on the left. Something we else is happening here. On the left. Looks like it's all sorted out by the time we arrived. Oh, but now there's a traffic jam. <laughs> this is like... I was thinking, this car compared to the road, cor road cars I normally drive, I feel like I'm going to get groceries. It's got traffic, too. A lot of cars in this race. God, we're just so pitifully slow back here. It's a big cars and a small, small course, really. Never thought of this as an especially narrow track, but that's because I've really only done open wheel cars here. I haven't done enough stock cars here. Ooh, right. I'm gonna blow my engine if I do that. Still there. Still so there. the story of the GT1 series so far seems to be the Astons all fly by the Corvettes into the corners, Still and there. then the Corvettes fly by the Astons on exit if they have the room. All clear, all clear. <laughs> so I gotta keep that in mind. I'm still not particularly worried about where I am in the pack for a couple laps. I imagine all the guys behind me have had incidents. We have a car stopped on the left. Speaking Go of right. incidents. And now another traffic jam up through the S's, because the guys that 
the guys that were more surprised by that are going to be slow. Uh, not enough room for me to... Whoa. I was not confident enough to, to go to his left there. And I'm really not... I'm going to break early here because I don't plan on uh, outbreaking an Aston. Come on, come on, come on. The guy behind me seems to have come up pretty quickly. Whoever's directly in front of me, I, I can't even see you right now. You just popped up for half a second. Red Corvette. Yeah, right in the thick of it. I'm breaking way too early right there. It's probably not doing the guys behind me any favors. You know, there's being conservative and then there's being unpredictable, and I think I've, I've break so early that previous corner a couple laps in a row that I'm uh, probably a little bit unpredictable, scaring the guys behind me. It's not very nice. Why did I just touch the throttle in the middle of that corner? That was weird. Ooh, um, I've blown the engine once in practice in this thing doing what I just did there. I need to be patient on those downshifts. I love that corner. That's one of my absolute favorite corners on the service. Whoa! Yeah, one on your left. Uh, that was not intentional, Stay I'm sure. Right. I think he was trying to get around the guy in front of him and didn't Clear realize I was coming up beside yeah, him. Yeah, one on your left. Meanwhile, right. I'm gonna be boxed in here a little bit. All clear, all clear. <laughs> all right, single file again. I should get this guy. Got one on your right. But he's likely going to fly behind the brakes here if he wants. Clear on the right. Nope, he didn't want. But I slowed down. I didn't slow down enough there and ended up overdriving the first part. But hey, if you're going to overdrive a corner like that, it's nice to do at a place where there's no room to get for someone to get around you. This car sounds so good. Both of these cars sound awesome, but I, I'm a fan of big silly V8s that gurgle when you get off the gas. Got a little room behind me somewhere, somehow I should say. I'd like to give a fair assessment of these GT1 cars, but to be honest, I had never driven the Corvette until uh, yesterday. It seemed like a bit of a dead series to me. Maybe I'm wrong, because I know a lot of people really like it. Okay. Car on your right. Nice catch there. Made me a little nervous. Still there. Clear on the right. I will say that, like, on paper, this car doesn't fit me as well as the Aston, in that it's, you know, a lot of... doesn't break all that well, doesn't corner all that well. Maybe... I feel like I'm just describing myself. <laughs> Maybe that's why it's a perfect fit. <laughs> his right foot is excellent, but everything else about his driving ability is just awful. But man, can that right foot go fast. Oh, not through the bus stop, though. That was a disaster of a line through there. These two corners to me, uh, even though they are in opposite directions, they remind me a lot of oval driving. The way you're really just trying to get the nose of the car down, settled, and pointed the right way so you can get on the gas as soon as possible and really smoothly. So in a car with this much power, you can't just necessarily floor the pedal. When you nail it, it feels to me just like you're on like a, a short oval and you nail the corner. The way everything is just smooth, the car feels like it's kind of not settled until right when you want to hit the gas and then everything just comes together and the car feels like, all right, let's go. Whoa, I just downshifted a little too aggressively there and locked up my rear tires, I mean my front tires. Locked up something. There's a guy coming up behind me with many names. And apparently he's got a plus or, uh, plus or minus sign in his name, too. That's 
wonder what country that comes from. All right, let's see if I can nail this. It's the first time I've really had room to get through this corner. Nope, carry too much speed into it. It's so key, and this car up through these S's, at least the setup I have, it just barely has enough downforce for you to stay flat out if you hit the line well. Uh, incidentally, I did not hit it very well that time, but I hit it better than this guy. You got one on your left. Clear on the left. I couldn't figure out what gear I was in there for a second. Moving on up. Oh, gonna go a little wide, or is it gonna be perfect? That was pretty good, actually. Got on the uh, got on the gas early. And that right there is where I've blown my engine. If you shove it down into second gear too early, it will happily explode that engine for you. This is one of those tracks that I think really benefits from either head tracking or three monitors. Personally, I prefer three monitors over head tracking in racing games. Because you can really look over your shoulder almost at the corner exit. And a lot of the corners that are tricky to get on the gas and keep the car under control, I find that if I, uh, if I just think about looking all the way through the corner, like that one, you can see that sprint banner really early. And as soon as you can see it, you can almost get on the gas and you know you're gonna nail it. That was pretty good. That's the best I've hit turn one, but I did not nail it. I had to wait a hair longer than I wanted to to get on the gas. Quite a ways to the guy in front of us. I think I take a really wacky line through this bus stop. It's something I should probably, uh, fire up eye speed and really take a look at but I looked at some practice times and it didn't it didn't seem like I was embarrassingly slow and I don't expect to be fast in these cars because it's been, it's been so long since I've driven GT cars and I've never been good at it never you know I usually in my open wheel car experience I can if I put in some practice, I can be one of the faster guys, at least in like a mid-split, but GT cars, I'm just not very good. I get the feeling the guy behind me is faster. Take it. Seems like he's all over my bumper the last half lap or so. We'll see how he does up through the S's in turn one. This car really has its... Uh, its strong suit is that turn one. If you nail it and put that torque to use very early, the Astons have some trouble up the hill. He might squeeze in. I'm not gonna bother to go defensive here. I'm just gonna keep an eye out to make sure he doesn't kill me. Just don't quite have the confidence to get the throttle all the way down there. I'm running a little wide and, and losing that camber. Oh no, curb, I gotta lift here. That might hurt. And again, I'm not gonna bother to do any kind of defensive line here. To be honest, I don't even know what the correct defensive line in the bus stop is. I did some practice really hoping to get some work in traffic before this race. And for whatever reason, the practice I was in, I just never ended up near anybody. And I was one of the faster guys there, which is just uh, an indication of how poor the field was, I think. Thank you. In this field, it seems like I'm just about where I should be. The guy in front of me's put some distance on me. The guy in front of me that started dead last, incidentally. Oh, don't hit the curb. 
44-7, that's pretty darn slow. I'm driving a bit too conservatively, I think. Definitely more conservatively than I was in practice. I should be running 44 flats in race trim. I don't know what gear I'm in. Crap, and I ran super wide. <laughs> Sometimes, because usually in this car, you get quite a lot of audio feedback. You can hear it go down to the next gear. But every once in a while, if you do it just right, you don't even hear anything. And it can be hard to tell if that gear really caught or not. Because in my setup, I can barely see the, uh, the gear indicator over in the corner. I like the, uh, the guy behind me seems conservative enough. I'm not worried that he's gonna murder me. He's just gonna wait for me to make a mistake. Oy. Oh, I didn't get the car to turn there. I lost a lot of speed. I feel like my, uh, my front tires feel a little worn out. I mean, I'm pushing too hard and taking too much speed into the corners and really burning them up. I don't know. There we go. That's what turn one is supposed to feel like. Keep it flat through here if I hit the line. Yep. Perfect. Flying up that hill. This next guy in front of me seems to have fallen back through the pack. The guy that started dead last is now a good bit in front of him, but uh, this guy seems like he's fallen. Oh, I took way too much speed in here. Turn, turn, turn. I miss driving big cars on road courses. It just feels so much more leisurely when things are... When you're hitting your spots, things just... It's smooth. More than any other car, maybe. Smooth is good. Smooth is fast. We've got a slow car on the left. Stay left. Or Go right. pick a side. I'm scrubbing this front. I just get a little, like, that was pretty good in turn one. I get a little nervous when you're going out onto that, that shoulder, the off-camber stuff. Because that's the easiest place to lose this car and not give yourself enough time to catch it. Oh, too much speed through here. That's gonna hurt. I just scrubbed the heck out of my front tires too, trying to make the car turn. I can feel it right now, they just don't turn. Totally baked them. I am going to go defensive here. Because he would have flown right by me. I'm in the locomotive right now. 
Oh, turn. That was not the tires. That was just me breaking too late. I would do well to be conservative on my turn ends till I get that sorted. I'm consistently pushing too hard into every corner. And that's that's just gonna get worse and worse the more you do it. Those tires will start going bald, heating up. Kick up a little dirt, the guy behind me. That car is a lap now. Could be interesting through here. I'm gonna catch this guy in a really bad spot. Car on your right. Clear on the right. And the guy behind me looks like he got through much cleaner than I did, but I don't think he has enough room. I'm taking too much speed into this corner. That's what I did last lap that kind of set me up for failure on all these subsequent corners. I took way too much speed down into the carousel, burned up my front, and then they had no turning authority left for these uh, S's. They're not S's, but you know what I mean. I can actually hear the guy behind me get on the gas before me a sign that I'm probably probably pretty slow through that corner. It's probably really frustrating. It's part of the reason I think I prefer the Corvette is that for passing opportunities it's, it's a lot easier to make a pass safely if you have better exit speed and better torque out of the corner than if you just you know can turn faster and brake harder. It's uh, more difficult to make that work for you safely. If you want to dive bomb, it's a lot easier. Oh, just really drifted through there. Oh no, save it. Uh, at least I kept out of traffic. <sighs> Crap, hopefully I didn't damage myself too much on that wall. Come on, buddy. That was pretty good in turn one. I get a little nervous when you're going out onto that that shoulder, the off-camber stuff. Because that's the easiest place to lose this car and not give yourself enough time to catch it. A little bit of post-commentary. This video was very embarrassing and I almost found the trash bin. I decided, you know what, sometimes it's, it's liberating to just put your mistakes out there for everyone to see. I tried to limp back to the pits and ended up snapping loose and hitting another wall on the way back. There were only a couple minutes left in the race, so that was the end of my day. I do plan on doing a couple more GT1 races at least. Hopefully I can keep my car pointed the right direction a little better. I'll catch you guys next time.